Hello again, friends, and welcome to another fine edition of 151. My name is Adam, and I'm joined by a man who thinks the F in UFO stands for freaky. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Justin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to another edition of 151. My name is Adam. Like I said, if you want to know more about us, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at 151 The Show. And don't forget to head to 151theshow.com or this station's website.com. Uh, for all of the podcast channels and YouTube channels and all that. They're just all there. We're going to keep it uh, to that, 151theshow.com. All right, friends, as we celebrate the month of Halloween, we did get a freak snowstorm today in Ankeny. Eight inches that of was, snow. And quite frankly, the time that I've ever seen you publicly picture uh, post inches of anything that I wasn't horrified by. Your your bandwidth dropped out there, Justin. Oh. <laughs> It was like, okay, well, it was a bad joke anyway, so moving on. Then moving on. All right, friends, so as we celebrate the month of October, we get a freak snowstorm, and we get to talk to a man who is on Unsolved Mysteries. If you saw on Netflix, they brought back the Unsolved Mysteries uh, series, and he was a part of Berkshire's UFO episode. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Warner himself is joining us tonight. Hello, Tom. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Thanks for having me in. Oh, absolutely, Tom. We're so glad to have you tonight. Um, Truth be told, uh, for uh, folks at home, Tom and I have talked a lot since this summer. Uh, He's actually been on the radio show a couple times, uh, actually earlier today, believe it or not. But uh, Tom is joining us tonight. Uh, We're going to talk about everything regarding his book, uh, which is uh, Beyond the Stars, correct? Correct. And we will have a uh, link to the uh, to the book on the uh, bottom of the page here. Uh, but uh, let's start with uh, the whole unsolved mysteries thing uh, for the people at home. Let's start the story there, and we'll get into all the the bizarreness of your life here in a little bit. But <laughs> wow, I didn't know you had that much time. <laughs> <laughs> We've got all the time in the world, Tom. No, no, oh, no, good. That's no. Good. But uh, seriously, that's where all this starts because. Uh, earlier this summer, Unsolved Mysteries comes out. You're in this thing in uh, this episode, Berkshire's UFO, and it's a UFO story that I never heard before. Well, the whole the whole thing was we. It probably was the best kept sec- uh, secret in the county, so of course you wouldn't hear about it. I mean, no one hardly ever talked about it. We didn't want to talk about <laughs> it, really. I mean, you talked about it to a certain amount of your friends, and. What happened was I did an interview with one of the guys that was on there and it was, I think, uh, I think it was new England legends or something. And okay. I had one line in it and the line was how close the guy says, how close were you? I said, if I had a baseball, I could have pinged it. And so, wow. He says, you know, and then another interview with somebody else. And then I was on coast to coast and, and then I was asked to do an interview on, on a, a documentary which was interesting it was a great documentary but then it just disappeared off the internet uh, you were telling me about that the first time and i want to get to that stuff yeah. here in a minute but we, we, we will and then i was in it called uh, the phone rings and this guy says are you tom warner i said depends <laughs> he says are you tom warner that uh, uh had a ufo encounter i said now it really depends <laughs> i said all right now he says all right. He says, I said, who am I? I said, who am I speaking with? And he said, Adam Riley, WGBH out of Boston. And I said, okay, fine. You know, if you want to do an interview, I'll do it. As long as you're going to be honest about the whole story. Yeah. And he did. And he did a very nice, it was a fast interview because it was for television. Yeah. And it was a short segment. I was real happy with it. And then all of a sudden I found it on one of these YouTube places where no UFO and they changed the not my part of my tape, but they used what I had said and then kind of twist the whole story. Uh oh. And I'm like, I'm done. No more. I'm not. Nope, nope, nope. I said to my wife, no, no, I'm done. I'm not gonna do it anymore. And then I came home and my daughter was home for from her job and was at the house and said, Dad, unsolved mysteries called. I said, Oh, really? No, you got to call him back. I said, I'll call her. I'll call him back after lunch. No, you got to call him now. You know, I'm like, okay, because she loved unsolved mysteries. Yeah, well, who did it like well, unsolved mysteries? Right, right. Robert Stack and the whole bit. Yeah. You know? So I called the woman up, and you know the number, and and we started a dialogue, and I I still wasn't really ready to do it because then I explained to her, I said, look, unless you tell the truth, 
if you're not telling the truth, I don't want anything to do with it because I find a lot of this, you know, they're not telling the story. They're telling the story, you know, someone wants to tell. Yeah. And you have to ask yourself, why are they wanting to tell it that particular way? And I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted the whole truth to come out about it. And that's it. And they agreed to. And they came out from Los Angeles out to our house to interview. And one of the persons backed out of the interview. And then the sister ended up doing the interview. That was Melanie who, who interviewed her brother backed out for the last minute. Oh, really? Flying. Yeah. And there's two other people that backed out who saw it, but didn't want anything to do with it. They just, just said, no, 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 no. At the last minute. It seems like every time I talk to you, I learn a little bit more about that uh, whole episode. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of interesting uh, things that, that took place at that time. All right, so Tom Warner, uh, he's joining us on 151 The Show. Uh, he's got a new book out called Beyond the Stars. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. But let's go back to what is that the night? basis of the Unsolved Mysteries episode? Well, the basis of the whole story was how a UFO encounter came into a small New England community and how that affected the community, even though certain people saw it, certain people had interactions with it, and yet people didn't talk about it. And it was a, a, like, a, it was just like a, a, a kept secret, you know? Yeah. I mean, in New England, it's, it's kind of like culture, you, you know, New Englanders are kind of reserved. And a lot of these families were old time New England families with the exception of Reeds who, who moved up from uh, New York, I guess at that time. But you just you just didn't talk about it. My own mother didn't talk about it. <laughs> just didn't talk about it. It's like you know, it was you know, I grew up Irish Catholic. You, you know, if yeah. you didn't talk about it, Tommy, it didn't happen. You know, that's how you know, that's how they, that's how they did, dealt with stuff. You know, Tom, do you think uh, like some of the recently? you know, released videos, you know, you've got military videos, you've got people talking about this openly in a way that's never been a serious dialogue and serious people talking seriously well, about it. Do you, do you think that's made it less of a taboo subject and, and kind of opened people up to possibilities that they wouldn't have considered before? Well, I think that the military opened up because we were doing this show. Yeah, I, I do, because the military knew we were doing this show. Because they're fans of Robert Stack. Well, maybe they are, maybe they're not. What you don't, what you don't see on the, the show was that after it left the Berkshires, it went to where I was, my family was on vacation. And the family that it went over there, literally a block away from where I was all summer, they had a UFO over their heads. And the next day, the Plattsburgh Air Force Base came down and interviewed those kids. Now, that was at the time when Project Blue Book was going on. So they would have had full knowledge of those records. Now, I was inquiring with the, the Air Force about different records and everything. And the emails were sent up the chain. And I, because I happened to be helping out with Unsolved on some of this background stuff, because I live here. Yeah. It went up the chain of command to the Air Force. But when it came down the chain of command, lo and behold, who's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, how interesting. Oh, and awesome. so they knew that they they knew damn well that 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 this was coming out. All right. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they listen to every conversation, including what we're saying right now. I have no doubt. The beautiful just, people. The beautiful people. I just want to tell people. say that I am completely happy with our overlords and I, I, I love them all. I love God them. Bless them. Yeah, love them. Look, all Justin. I'm asking is every once in a while, if my listening FBI agent could just be a little more helpful. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Say, hey, dude, that's a bad idea. You know, <laughs> those not pictures your are guardian disappointing. Angel. Well, <laughs> why not? Yeah, oh, I, I, I agree. And, and truth be told, I, I was throwing a few hints like that. Well, uh, Justin is a communist. This is 151 The yeah. Show. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tom, let's go back to uh, the night of this stuff. Okay, so we're back to September. Move back to September first. Okay. September nineteen sixty nine, correct? Well, yeah, actually, it was a it was a really hot day. Okay, the day the day before, actually, I had gone we that weekend the day before, which was on a Sunday. 
we went over to my grandmother's house and my grandma, I didn't know at the time, but my grandmother was dying. So my mother wanted to go over and see her. It was the last time I saw my grandmother alive. And so it was kind of very somber and everything. And then the month, the Labor Day came along and my mother just wanted to have a, you know, me to have a nice day along with the other siblings. And it was really hot. And then we went and swam until we, you know, it turned, you know, yeah. you go in the creek and, you, you know, you swim until your, your feet are blue and, Okay, it's time to get out, you know. Normal day, just asked to go over to the Shaw's to go coloring because I, you know, uh, you know, my Crayolas and, you know, the 64 Crayolas. And and I would always uh, color with my neighbor, Debbie, who was Jane's sister. And we'd just color for hours or watch TV and they all played cards out in the other room or whatever. But that particular night, it was just Graham. We called her Graham. The grandmother was Graham. And Jane was there and Debbie and I. And then Debbie and I watched a little TV and then we went into another room to do coloring and we're just, I'm just coloring. And all of a sudden it's this mental telepathy and I've had it before. I've had it as a child. It wasn't like overpowering, but at this particular time, it was so overpowering that I just, just stood up. I just got up and I walked over to the window and I looked out and this mental telepathy saying, you have to go home now. What do you do? You know? (laughs) So Debbie says, what are you doing? I said, I have to go home now. And she goes, is your mother calling you? I said, no. Well, someone is. <laughs> I said, I think God's, I said to her, I looked at her, I, said, I think God's must be talking from me from that clouds or up there in the space or something. I said, you know, and yeah. she goes, why? I said, I have to go home, I said. And that's all I said. And I bolted out of the room. And as I got, opened the door, Debbie's sister, Jane, looks at me. I said, I have to go home. <laughs> And, and the look on my face, <laughs> they look really frightened. Yeah. And it must have been my look on my face that frightened them. And so I bolted out the door. Now, you got to picture this. You go out the door, and there wasn't any light on, and it's no windows. And then the next door was a, a hallway, which was led off on one side to the coal, old coal room. And there was no light. So you went through that room knowing how to just go out the door. And so when I hit that door, I was booking. I mean, there's one thing I could do when I was a kid. I could run like a damn deer. And and I'm sorry. I'm not laughing because I'm laughing at you. Because you can't picture me running like a deer. (laughs) You can't picture me running either. But just the whole thing of, I have to go home. Where where are you going? I have to go home. You know, that whole, just that whole scene, it's just mental. Yeah. It was so strong. It was like, there was no holding me back. I was like, so so was it, was it actual words or was it just like a compulsion? No, it it was words. I mean, it's mental telepathy is, it could have been in any language, but it's conversed into your language that you understand. And Tom, a little background about me. I'm, I'm kind of, we always talk about me being the, the paranormal Luddite, so to speak. I have Mm -hmm. the, our investigator friends and teams that always want to go take me. And I'm like, nothing gets through here. It's not going to happen. So I, I, this always, this, this, this intrigues me. Who does it (laughs) sound like? Because if I had yeah. inner monologue, I'd want it to sound like Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> you know, I'd rather have had a, a nice combo voice, like or, or Yoda. Go home, you will. You know? I mean, right? <laughs> Everybody but, always anyways. goes Sam Jackson or Morgan Freeman. Oh and yeah, Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> that would get you to go home. I tell you, in a hurry. And that's what it was. <laughs> you know, I was out of there. So open up that door. I'm bolting across and I just go flying across the driveway and you hit the grass. And I would say probably 20 yards after that is, is where this particular rock was that they talked about in the show. And all of a sudden it went silent. I mean, like noise was gone and everything was broken down into milliseconds. And it was like, all of a sudden it would be like, all of a sudden you're going. Kittens are breaking. You, you get it? You that it. was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. All right. That, that was my... That was the, <laughs> okay, there you go. You want me to act that? I acted it out, man. And But I don't know what's going on around me. I just know that I think I'm running, and all of a sudden, everything's gone into slow motion, and I could sense something was off to my left. I just sensed it. 
And I turn to my left, and a UFO just went, Phew! and it just drops right there. Oh, bullshit, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> So no, that, no, that's know, how it looked, know, huh? It just joking. it just dropped out of the sky and it was there, huh? Just just choom, just dropped right there. It was just right there. And it, I'm just staring at this thing, and a light comes on, and my hands jerk back. And all of a sudden, it's like you know how when you're under, I, I always describe it like this: like you're underwater and yeah. you come up with that first gulp of air. Mm-hmm. Only it was reverse, and all of a sudden, now I'm just everything's kind of like slow motion, but foggy, and I. And the first thing I do is I look to my right and I see this girl off to my right. And she has this just horrified, I mean, whoa, horrified look on her face. And then I saw other kids off to, on my left. And every time I'd see someone, I'd look down, you know, yeah. I didn't want to see anymore. Was there a transition moment in there from where you're outside on the grass into somewhere else? Bam. Just like instant there. Then I remember seeing it looked like a, just a normal kind of guy. And then another looked like sort of like an alien. I actually did a drawing of it after the event happened. And I did it on our garage wall. And then my father covered it up. And I absolutely had to redo my garage this summer. And I opened it up. And there it was. I was like, whoa. How long were you aboard the ship? I mean, you obviously came well, back. Was, so here's the thing. It was time. The first, that night was time. The You know, Jane Shaw, she literally saw me in the UFO beam and bam, disappeared. And I got to tell you, the best expression you want to see is when when Unsolved came to our house and we're all sitting in this library where we are. And I told my story, what I remember. And and he looks at Jane and said, Jane, tell me, tell me your story. And then she got to that point and she goes, and he was in that beam. And all of a sudden, he was gone. And Bob Weiss looked and said, what do you mean he was gone? He was gone. Well, where did he go? He disappeared in the beam gone and bob goes we have a story here (laughs) right that's not an unexplained time event that's not you know hey nobody can can trace the whereabouts he figured it was about seven minutes okay right but that's but that's literally somebody disappearing i remember seeing like a table and then i remember seeing instruments and and the lights that were in there were colors i'd never seen before then I was fully conscious, and when I was, I was put back down in the beam, and I was fully conscious, like the last foot off the ground. So I'm like flat in the air, and boom, back down. And that's when my brother yelled to me, "Run, Tommy!" And I said, "I can't. It's holding me down." And the beam was literally holding me on the ground. I couldn't move. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't move my head. Mental telepathy said, "We'll be done in a minute." <laughs> and when they said we're done now, the beam went off. I rolled to my right and I stood up and I looked at the UFO. Was there any sound? What did it look like? Nothing. Like really? Nothing. No sound at all. That's the weird part. It was no sound at all. So you had a typical New England upbringing with no no unusual things in your childhood. Good to know. I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. No, uh, no, I'm only joking. Tom Warner, so, uh, the author so, of Beyond the Stars, is joining us tonight on uh, 151 The Show. You can find out more about us at 151theshow.com or this station's website.com. When you saw Unsolved Mysteries' representation of the UFO, what did, did it spark any emotion? Was it spot on? Was it close? Was it? Did you go, oh, holy shit? you know that's it or no it was it was it was so well done it really was i mean when they they filmed at the house i wasn't my age anymore i was 10 again he brought us back to like we were kids again i mean huh i was a wreck all day man i tell you i was a wreck tom warner uh joining us on the show tonight to talk about uh his just vast amount of experiences as we kind of go away from unsolved mysteries and and all of that you've had a lot of different experiences and and from what you've told me in the past it's everything from almost being abducted as a kid uh men in black stories government stories you've had a ton of this stuff and it's in the book beyond the stars which like i said we'll have a link to no one can ever say tom warner didn't live a interesting life (laughs) i guess so well it's Okay, we can on the short part after the 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 actually what happened after the that particular night September first. I was scared as hell to go outside. I mean, I was like, I ain't going out. Yeah. <laughs> Sun went out. Whoop, Tommy goes in. That's it. You know. Yeah. Tommy, there's plenty of time. I why I ever listen to him anyway. My brothers, uh, there's plenty of time to have a catch, Tommy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. I'm like, okay, out we go. So I have I threw the ball to him. 
he threw it to me. I threw it back and forth. And I threw the ball to him and it went 15 feet and the ball stopped and went whoosh, right by me. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I'm chasing after the ball. Now, I got to tell you, I really sucked at baseball. Okay. You know, they'd always say, Tommy, you ca- it's called catch it, not fetch it. Okay. Ah. So, I mean, I could run like a deer, but I, <laughs> I could catch like a deer too. Okay. And my other two brothers and a neighbor, actually, it was, you know, Jane's brother, are running up. And he's yelling, did you see the UFO? Did you see the UFO? It was right above Tommy's head. And I, the only thing I could think of was, oh, no, not again. And he pointed out, they said, look, it's right there. And it was probably like maybe 100 yards up in the air, just sitting there. And it's the same damn thing with the color lights. You could just, you know. And all of a sudden, mental telepathy said, you're fine now. And I went, whoa. Okay. Boom. And it was gone. So what do they mean by you're fine now? That I'm not hurt. Okay. All right. Everything's they, hurt. They, they, they came back and fixed the cloning process. They cloned, who knows? But it's all in the book. Oh. You know, I, I'll tell you why I wrote the book. You know, all joking aside, and, and I have to tell you, you're fun to interview with because even on a serious interview, you get me laughing anyway. I mean, you must be great around campfire stories. I gotta tell you, <laughs> you should see me with Ready? a little whiskey. Little little whiskey, and we're good to go. After that, I was like, I was. Let me tell you, once I went in a shock again. That was the second time I went in a shock. I don't remember anything. And that was two weeks after the story that they two put on you. Uh, now, here's, Mysteries. When I say, here's the strange part, when you go like, what the hell, strange? Anything stranger? Than well, that? here we yeah. go, everybody. <laughs> Right. <laughs> your seat belt. <laughs> okay. Three years later, I'm up at Lake Champlain. Yeah. And yeah, kids, we're all jumping in. It's almost time for supper. And I, it was only like three of us out, left out on the, this dock. And I said, oh, I'll see you. I went home for supper. And I dove in and we swim in. And when we swam in, we got up to about waist deep. We stood up. And he looked at me and he goes, You know about UFOs? No, I don't. No, you're not. I didn't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, I said, how would you know that? And he looked at me and he says, because I was on that UFO. And I remember you and your brother. <laughs> Honestly, though, what what do you say to that at that point? I <laughs> my pants, personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, what do you say that, A, you were witnessed in a UFO beam and you disappeared? You've you witnessed somebody else on the UFO being on a UFO. Your witness being dropped down by a UFO, and someone comes up and they say, "I witnessed you on a UFO." You go, "Well, guess it happened." Wow! You know? Right? You know, and 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 then the question then becomes, "Why me?" Yeah. And and it's really why I wrote the book. It was you, you know I. I had this lifetime question of why these events. And, you know, you know, there's always that name, Tom, doubting Tom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I would question everything. And then these events would prove existence of what was out there is real. It became more serious over time. It became very serious. Let me ask you this, not, and, and you don't have to give away the exact story of the book, because we want people to get the book so you become a world-famous author, and then we know somebody famous. But the question— well, let's hit 100 copies, okay? <laughs> <laughs> My mom, she's really spending her money on this. Yeah. No, but, uh, you know, in, your, in, in, in all of this, what is yeah. the really weird moment for you? Like, be, I mean, other than being abducted by you. The UFO. weirdest? Yeah, as you get Probably older Probably this interview. Stuff, Thanks, no, Jeff. I think I think that the 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 strangest was um, seeing human alien hybrids, and that they talked to me. What did they say? You owe us money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One no, of okay. us. One okay. of us. One okay. of us. Okay. So, so a here's human how alien this, hybrid. This, what? Tell us about it. So I get this mental telepathy to go up to this this. Um, it was a research center. It was the um, Silvio Conde. And Silvio Conde was, uh, he was our congressman for many years. And then he retired. And, and they had a, a place where you could go to research, you know, okay. genealogy and everything. 
And I was like driven to go up there. I went up there. I'm like, there's no cars here. I'm like, okay. And I'm driving around, no cars around the whole building. Cause they were talking about that. They might close this place up. So I said, is this weird. Okay. But, okay. So I open the main door, it opens and I look at the Congressman's desk and alarms go off and a guy comes out and he says, you must've touched something, you know, like only kind of a little bit on the accusatory side. Like you're trying to pencil. Yeah. Me. Take a little souvenir from the, you know, Congressman. Nah, nah, I I didn't touch anything. And he goes, you must have. I said, I didn't, please. You know, I said, and he goes, okay. And he turns off the alarms and he says, it's only me and another guy in here now. I said, okay. So I come in and I'm on my computer, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, I'm getting this mental telepathy. The the guy in back of me is talking to me. I'm like, man. Can't be. It has to be my it's imagination. Not, it's not Leslie Nielsen and or Sam Jackson, so it can't be. <laughs> can't be right. So the guy walks over to me and he says, "You're trying to find people, friends, and stuff." I said, "I'm doing research." He goes, "Stand up," and he goes on the computer. He goes, <laughs> "I mean, I never seen hands move so fast in all my life." And he goes, "Let me know when you're done." And I was on a program that I could look up anyone were were there pictures no but i could find anybody i wanted on that oh, site, thank god you know? because some of the stuff i've done is <laughs> yeah i if i had looked you up at the time oh, man. boy he's got a little wanger uh tom warner <laughs> <laughs> tom warner joining us tonight on the show as part of our uh, second halloween special oh, Lord, of 2020 uh, okay, so uh, you just walked into so this anyway, place? So, so anyway, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm curious. So you just walked into this joint? Yeah, there was only three of us in the whole place, the whole building. What, what was the building called? It was the Silvio Conti Research Center. And you just walked in? Yeah, well, before, the last time before I was there, it must have been like 150 people there. I walked in now, they were talking about closing it. Really? It was only myself. The guy who was running the place and this other guy. And super so, typer. Super typer. So and and then he what wanted, year was uh, this? I would say probably five years ago, maybe. I'd have to look it up. Okay. Close. I'd have to really look it up. But anyway, I was there doing research on a painting that I inherited. And in the painting was a famous American painting. The artist was. And in the painting, it was a allegorical painting by Maynard Dixon. L. Manor Dixon. And in the center of the painting, there was an image in almost like a charcoal graphic kind of way. And when I took a picture of it, I blew it up and it was a picture of the artist. And I and I said, just looks like more. And I blew it up. And it was another image. And the third image was an alien. The painting was 1903. And there was all kinds of writings on it. And I'm trying to find out what the hell all this stuff means, right? So no, I didn't say anything to him. And he goes, so you want to know about the Knights Templar? I'm like, well, well, if you, well, if you exist, I'm, fine, sir. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, if you're ready to give up some secrets here, I'm willing to listen and stuff. It's like he was drawn in. For, I mean, he didn't need to try hard. I was like, I was so convinced because the painting was behind a lock vault. I'm like, bah. I can tell you anything. You ain't getting to that painting. What was the point so of anyway, this? So, I mean, if this guy just... Okay, okay. I've, so uh, here's the rest of the story. So he tells me all this and stuff. All of a sudden, he's looking at me, and I realize I'm looking at him, and all of a sudden, it hits me. He's not blinking. I'm like, did he not blink? And now I'm looking at him, and now he's staring at me, and it's like, then he asks me where the painting is, and I tell him. Like, I will, uh, yeah. like, you know, like a zombie. I t- give him the information, idiot. Like Justin. All of a sudden, I'm like, the guy at the counter says, I'm doing my work and stuff. And he comes up and he goes, hey. I said, yeah. To the guy that was running the place. He goes, where'd that guy go? I don't know where he went. He says, he didn't go by me. He says, stand right here. If he goes by you, you let me know. He came back. <laughs> and he looks and he goes he's not here i said well he must be he goes 
he's not here. I went, I gotta go. I said, <laughs> oh, no, 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 this, this, I mean, this scared the crap out of me. I'm like, oh my God, this scared me more than the UFO. And I'm like, because it's, you know, it's one thing you see this, the guy's, he literally disappeared. So you, you go in there, it's you and two guys that you think no, are both like running the place. Himself. And two people, one that's running it, and the other guy I, I, I did as a human alien hybrid. Okay. And that guy literally disappeared out of the Disappears. place. Disappears. And I go like, I'm out of here. I get back to my house, and the guy left me a note. The human alien. At, at your house. In the Non-blinking, my... super no. typer. Put, left a handwritten note. Do we dare ask what was on the note? <laughs> Oh, it's in the book. Everybody go to Amazon.com and look up Beyond the Star. No, 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 no. Right no, now. No, 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 no. You know, I tell you. And don't be cheap with the Kindle. You get the hard back. <laughs> it, that's insane. Okay, look, Tom, I know you're pulling up the, the part of the book, but. Can you what? read it? In Gog We Trust. In Gog We Trust. In Gug. Now, I didn't know what the hell it meant. So I call up the guy. And I said, did you leave a note? I was pissed. Oh, sorry. How'd, no, <laughs> you're fine. Well, no, that the pissed is fine. How'd you pissed get his number? Fine. Huh? How'd you get his number? No, I called I called the, the, the center where oh, I was. I thought you were calling the hyper. I'm like, how did you get his number? No, no, no. no. Did anything I, else I, happen? I, I called the center and I said to the guy, I said, did you leave a note in my book? He says, no. I said, are you sure you didn't leave a note in my book? He says, I didn't go near you. I went, oh, okay. I told him, I said, I said, do you know what it means? He goes, no, I don't know what it means. I didn't know what it meant. So years later, I was sent to somebody that we call Z in the book because we couldn't use his name. And real quick, Tom, if this leads to me getting probed, I'm going to be real pissed off at you. <laughs> like, you laugh his ass off. Like, really pissed off, okay? Well, hey, <laughs> dude, don't don't knock it till you try it, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so years so anyway, later. So back to this note, seriously. Yeah. So this guy we named Z because we we had to call him Z because we couldn't use his name. We couldn't. You, you know, we had to protect for his identity. Okay? okay. I was told I could make one call to Z through somebody else. That's it. Who told you? Can't say. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I call I call up the person. Z's on the phone. And he says, uh, there's something you want to ask me. I said, yeah. I said, what's, I have a piece of paper that was given to me. And it said, in Gug we trust. It was dead silence. Now, Z was, I will say in the book, it does talk about Z and his position, what he was guarding, was shoot to kill orders. I also say in the book. <laughs> Son of a bitch, Tom, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these stories are, you know, it's much better to sit around a campfire and tell this stuff. You know? Probably awesome with a whiskey or two. But I'll tell you this right now. I will throw down my Boom. wife so I can get away. So Z sends me a note. Okay. Which is the pictures in the book. Because, you know, if you're going to spill the beans, you might as well spill the beans everything, right? Because I know. Knock, knock, knock. Okay. They, everybody knows where the hell I am. It's no secret where I live. The secret where I live? Don't. Don't get me involved. <laughs> I'll tell you this right now, Tom. Well, if Z, any of this is true, I will me, drive well, them Z to your house. <laughs> and Z drew a picture of what he was guarding. And it was about a seven-foot gray alien. No. Ow. Oh, damn it. We're going to die. <laughs> I want to party with Tom. <laughs> Let's get some whiskey. Let's head to New York. Let's go party with Tom. So anyway, I, I'm trying to read what he wrote. He goes, it was a black, great alien. Uh, it says, whoever gave you that note 
knows way too much what's going on. And he wrote in it what the guy said, in Gug we trust until his salvation. Well, that's not ominous at all. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I just want the people listening to know that I think Tom's full of s***. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, guess what? I already gave out to your address. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't believe in any of this nonsense. i tell you that right now. I just think he's insane. <laughs> I, for one, believe in our overlords and think they're doing a hell of a good job. I tell you, you asked me about the strangest uh, thing. And you <laughs> did not disappoint, sir. No, no, you did not. That, you know? Like, how do you, Tom, let me ask you this before, because we're getting a little long in the tooth here, yeah, but it, how do you process this? How do you walk <laughs> around every day being the dude that got abducted by a UFO a couple times, run into the mm -hmm. men in black, uh, have mental uh, mental telepathy with Sam Jackson in your head, and 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 mm -hmm. and the the whole thing about a guy it gets wilder. How? How much wilder? Uh, just give me like a one word answer. How? What's the wild next wildest thing? Um. You all right? I'm, I'm Tom. I, I swear I'm not making fun of you, but I mean, that's incredible. I've been told things. Yeah. Known things. But mostly I've been proven. Things have been proven to me. I would think the strangest thing that was ever proven to me was told to reach down and pick up a rock. And on the rock was an image of a mother holding a baby. And the baby looked like me. All joking aside. I've come off of close to death many times. And um, the whole story was to tell my life, you know, and there was a lot of times when I came within seconds of being burned alive, drowned. And it was, I was shown a way out. And so then you have to figure out, well, why? And, and it's, and I was a messenger and that message was to convey that, that, that there's more out there than this earth and how we, we treat people as human beings and how we're treating the earth. We're never getting off here unless we stop messing it up. And that's the whole message, you know? So yeah, there's, there's. A lot of things, you know, you can, you know, you can always have your probing jokes. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of it, it's, you, you know, it's, some of it's really deep and emotional and scary. And, you know, I, it, Tom, it, I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, it, it was never my intent to. Ah, no, man. I'll tell you, I, I got it. No, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Because it, I, I wrote it to help people. And, and I've had people call me up that we're going to commit suicide until they saw that story. And, and so there's other people that hurt, really hurt about, you know, things. And, and I'm okay. I'm okay with it. You know, I'm okay with joking and stuff. And, you know, occasionally I can, it's, it's like the human brain. Okay. The human and brain encodes memory. Like when you're little, no matter what the memory is, like, you can think of like when you're a little kid of like Christmas or something, you can think of, you know, how you felt and the presents you got and yeah. Or, or didn't get, you know? Right. <laughs> and you know, Oh, Oh, was this bottle of whiskey meant for me? Oh, that's your father's. Okay. Sorry. You know, <laughs> but you, you got things encoded in you and they become, you can bring them back 
And so some of this stuff is like overwhelmingly emotional. And and sometimes it, it just like floods back into you. And and sometimes some of those things are like, whoa, you know? And, I, and they're like they're like unbelievable. Right. It's like it's crazy. That's why my so another part of the book that I talk about is is the fact that I've always had this, you know, you have this movie that say plays in your head and that's your life. It, it plays. Like when I was in a car accident, we were going over a hundred miles an hour and we hit a stone wall, but my life was broken down moment by moment. And, and the movie played and everything, except my movie, I have two movies that play and the movie that plays is this, is of another planet and that's the part that's that's probably the most mind-blowing of everything and i can specifically see the plays and events that that took place whether that was what was put in me as a child from ufos and all this stuff yeah i'm you know we tag sharks and we do different things. And and for me, it's like I was tagged. And then, you know, you have to wonder why. I, I did want to say that I it, it was my intention to bring up so many emotions. It really was. And it's just you're no, a guy. Dude, that... it's, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> I Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. I, I felt no, for a second. I was like, think... hey, Ed, listen. What do you think happened on the set of Unsolved Mystery? I, I hopefully you had a really good time and right. a good sandwich. No, we all broke down crying at the really point. Uh, everyone, huh? Everyone, uh. the director, everyone cried at different points. Oh boy! Well, and and, was and Tom, my- I had a I had a question because and and it kind of all ties into this, and I, I think it's a, yeah. a a nice way to wrap it up before we move into the shameless plug, which is. For, yeah. for somebody like you to have had such a series of unique uh, experiences, which I'm sure some of them had a very positive impact and changed the way you think. And some of them, I'm sure, like everything else in life, like you talked about, you know, having to live with it and keep it a secret, not talk about it. And the negative impacts that went along with that. When you have to balance that against what I see as the unique perspective of what most people wonder about and spend their life chasing you already know and you've known from a from a young age that certainty i mean does does that certainty and having that proven to you and having no doubts in your mind really in a way does that all balance out for you for the most part for the most part it does there's there's times that you know it just blows my mind (laughs) right i i I don't if you were told, I don't think that I could process what you've processed. I'll be honest with you. I don't. If you were told today, you, you go to sleep at night and all of a sudden you're told three months from now, you're going to save two boys from drowning. And then three months later, you save two boys from drowning. Right. You, you I, know? I don't know how to process that. But that's how my whole life has been. Wow. That's and amazing. So it's, it's sometimes it's, and every time you go like, well, that's coincidence, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and, and I'll see, you know, which it's really strange is like, I'll see things before they happen. And so in another interview I had done with these couple of fellas and they said, all right, so what do you see in the basketball? And I said, Miami events against Los Angeles. I said, Miami's going to lose to the Lakers. The Lakers are going to take it in six games. He goes, all right, I'll call you on it if that happens. Lakers in six. It, it happened. Goes, Why don't you bet? It happened, it's, yeah. Because it's not why that's shown. It's just a little I'm little just thing. asking for a little bit more love on our podcast. That... <laughs> That's all right, Tom. Uh, let's let's uh, wrap this up so we can get to the uh, shameless plug. 
Uh, and and you, what you what you wrote is is a really great way to end. So let's get to that. Uh, this is one five one the show. This is our second Halloween uh, episode for the year of twenty twenty. We were joined tonight by Tom Warner. Uh, he was on Unsolved Mysteries. He's got a new book that we're going to get to here in just a second. Uh, if you want to know more about 151 The Show, head to our website, 151theshow.com, or this station's website.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at 151 The Show. And friends, we can't end without a shameless plug. Cue the music! <laughs> All right, everybody, this is the part of the show where we shamelessly plug something. And tonight, it's all about Tom and his book. And when we say shamelessly plug, it's it's a very lovely, loving term for that. Um, you could, We'll have a link to the uh, book on Amazon at the bottom of the page. But uh, Tom, uh, tell us a little bit more about the book, why sh- people should get it. Well, I'm going to read the forward to you. Okay, let's do it. How does one explain the unexplainable? And for what purpose is it revealed not only about the subject of UFOs, but the question I get most frequently asked, why Tommy Warner? I never intended to write my autobiography, but over time I felt compelled to express this complex story of an amazing event and life that followed afterwards. After being on, being asked to be on a number of radio shows and two documentaries, I began to per- think perhaps I should examine the question to why I was chosen to experience all these bizarre happenings. My UFO encounters and my unusual journey did not start with that historic day of September 1st, 1969, or finish with that day. The culmination of this story started at such a young age and continued through my adulthood. I am but a messenger, and I will conclude that story with that message. My book will take you from my youth and what I experienced before my close encounters, then the close encounters themselves, and how I felt and what I feared and how this all changed me. The subject of close encounters is one that would never go away, no matter where I went. In writing this book, it's not just an explanation for myself and the reader, but perhaps a healing mechanism for some who have made had similar experiences. I open my heart to those who suffer in silence. The pain of wanting to talk and the fear of being ridiculed can be overwhelming. So forward I will go to tell this story in my own raconteur way. When we are very young, Our understanding of the universe is limited to our short experiences. Yet as children, we are more open to these experiences that may not make sense to adults. With an open mind through time, we may gain knowledge in both experiences and understanding of this UFO topic in a scientific way. We do so by asking questions, never fearing the questions nor the answers, freeing the mind to possibilities that perhaps we are not alone in the universe. By understanding that perhaps one day we can get there by travel to worlds far beyond ours and understand their worlds beyond the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Warner, Beyond the Stars. We have a link uh, at the bottom of the page. Tom, thank you so much for coming on tonight. We appreciate it, man. Guys, it was great. It was great.